today in this video we will discuss uh, the Vendigra generator. We will learn Vendigra generator under the following subtopics. First, we will see what is Vendigra generator and what function it performs, and then we will see its principle, and then we will look at its construction, and then finally we will see its working. Right. So without any further ado, let us start. So our question is, what is Van de Graaff generator? Right. So basically, it is an electrostatic generator which is uh, capable of generating a very high potential difference. Right. Uh, it can generate potential difference of 10 to power 7 million volts. Right. We can generate this much of potential from the from using a Van de Graaff generator. Right. You might be wondering that. Where do we need such a high potential difference, right? So the answer is that uh, such a high value of potential difference is needed whenever we perform a nuclear experiment, right? There are some experiments in nuclear physics where we have to, you know, uh, strike the nucleus of an atom with uh, charged particles like alpha particles or uh, deuteron or neutron, right? So we need to uh, strike the nucleus of an atom with the alpha particles or any other charged particle. Right? Now we know that uh, alpha particle is a, uh, this nucleus of an atom is a positively charged, right? And alpha particles uh, and the deuteron and are also positively charged particles, right? Now when we strike the alpha particles to the nucleus of an atom, what will happen? The alpha particles will go and get deflected. Because they both are positively charged, or sometimes it will get rippled back because uh, they will you know ripple each other because they are of same charge. Now, if somehow we give this alpha particle, which is a positively charged, very high amount of energy so that it gets a lot of kinetic energy and and will hit the nucleus without getting reflected back. Right? When it can happen, it can happen only when our alpha particles have a very high energy, right? So, how we can provide this high energy to an alpha particle? So, in order to provide this very high energy, we will use the potential. You know that we have uh, u is equal to q into v, right? The potential energy of a charge, which is equal to q into v, which is potential, v is potential here, potential, right? If we increase the potential, then what will happen? The potential energy of charge will also increase. Now we know that from conservation of energy, we can convert potential energy to kinetic energy, right? Which is half mv square. Correct. So as we increase the potential energy by increasing the value of v, what will happen? Its kinetic energy will also increase, means its velocity will increase. Means it will, it can now you know, move with a very high velocity so that it gets a strike to the nucleus and will disintegrate it. Right. So this is the function of a Venturi generator. It basically you know uh, accelerate the charge particle to a very high velocity so that the charge particle strikes the nucleus without getting deflected or without getting rippled back. Right. So in short, if I say then Van der generator is used to accelerate the charged particles to a very high energies, which are basically required or needed for experiments to you know uh, probe the small scale structures of matters, right? So this is the function of a generator. Now we will quickly move on to its principle and working and in construction, right? So let's start. So principle. So this generator basically works on two principles. First is coronal discharge and second is collecting action of hollow conductor. Right. So we will look at these two principles one by one. Let us start with coronal discharge. So what is coronal discharge? It is also known as uh, the discharging principle. Discharging action of discharging action of sharp points right 
fraction what is this principle let us see in detail suppose we have a sphere right we have a sphere of radius let's say r let's say radius is r and uh, let's say it has the charge q which is uh, uniformly distributed over its surface correct like this it will be what will be its surface charge density sigma it will be is equal to q upon its upon area right right now what will be the potential at this surface of this sphere we know that the potential will be v is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 1 q upon r so this will be potential at the surface of the sphere right now if i replace q by sigma into a from this equation q is equal to sigma into a so v will become what it will become sigma into a upon 4 pi epsilon naught into r now what is a a is nothing but 4 pi r square the area of the sphere and uh, 4 pi epsilon naught into r now just quickly cut this r 4 pi is 4 pi now v is into epsilon naught is equal to sigma into r right now we know that potential at the surface at all the points of this sphere will be same right because uh, the distance at the every point of the sphere from the center will be same therefore the potential at each point will be same correct so it means that potential is constant means v is constant right therefore v into epsilon is also constant therefore we get sigma into r is equal to constant some constant number right Therefore, we have sigma, which is nothing but surface charge density, which will be uh, basically proportional to 1 upon r, right? right? So, this is the relation, mean surface charge density is inversely proportional to the radius of curvature. Now, suppose if I have a surface like this, say, if I have a surface like this. Right. Now, if a uh, positive charge Q is uniformly distributed over its surface, let's say, right, the charge is distributed over its surface uniformly. Now, what can we say about the charge densities? Here, we know that uh, the radius of curvature of this point, of this this edge, will be small, right? R will be small, so at this point the charge density will be large because we have just seen that sigma is inversely proportional to oh, sigma is inversely proportional to one upon r. So the edges where curvature is very small, there we have a large surface charge density, right? As compared to let's say the, at this edge, what will happen? At this edge, the curvature is very you uh, know radius is very large therefore the density of charge will be small as compared to this a point right okay fine so we have understood it means that whenever if we have the pointed nib like this suppose we have the pointed nib like this okay let's say if on this surface we have some positive charge distributed uniformly what will happen its tip at its this point, its tip will be having a very high charge density. Correct? There is no doubt in it. Okay, fine. So, what will happen when the charge density increases at this point? At this point A. What will happen when the charge density increases? The electric field at this point will also increase, right? Because E is proportional to charge density. Because E is nothing but E is equal to what? So I not into Q upon R square. I can write Q is equal to, I can replace Q with uh, sigma into A upon R. Therefore, E is proportional to sigma. Therefore, at this point, electric field will also be very high. Correct? Now, uh, if we keep on increasing charge at this point, what will happen? 
the air around this point has some electric constant value right the air has the constant value let's say 3 into 10 to power 7 or 8 mole per meter right now if the electric field strength at this point crosses this value what will happen the air around this will get ionized right so what does it mean that air gets ionized let us understand so we have this uh, like this pointed object like this like this positively charged now when the electric field increases at this point the air around this will get oh ionized means it will get distributed like this negative air positive air like negative air positive air negative air positive like so in this way the air molecules get polarized sorry ionized right so this positive charge will attract the negative charges and will repel the positive charges right so in this way it will seems like that this point a is spraying the positive charge in the air right so this phenomenon okay this process by which the charge at the pointed end of a conductor gets discharged is called corona discharge right so this is the first principle on which our generator is based upon now let us look at its second principle so its uh, second principle is what the collecting action of hollow conductor now what is this let us consider a sphere right this is a large spherical shell this is a spherical shell right it, it has some charge q capital q and the sphere is s bar let us consider uh, basically this is a spherical shell right this is s1 is what s1 s1 is spherical shell spherical shell right and consider s2 sphere which is inside this which is a sphere conducting a sphere which is inside this shell right like we have somehow placed this uh, spherical conductor inside this shell like this let us say we have uh, taken a uh, insulated wire or uh, insulated you know thread by which i have suspended this spherical conductor inside this hollow spherical shell as well. let us name this as uh, s2 let's say its radius is r right its radius is r and its uh, radius is capital r Fine. Now, now this principle says that when a charged sphere is brought into internal contact with the hollow conductor, right? I mean, if I connect this sphere, spherical shell to this conductor with some, let's say, conductor wire, conducting wire, and what will happen? Let's say I am connecting this to this conducting wire, this conducting wire, and what will happen? Irrespective of the charge on this on the spherical shell, the charge of this sphere will get transferred to this spherical shell. This is the principle, right? I mean, let's say if I have, let's say here I have some uh, ten coulomb of charge on this surface, right? And if I have two coulomb charge on this surface, then what will happen? This two coulomb charge will transfer from this sphere to this spherical shell. And then it becomes zero and it becomes twelve. Now you will be wondering that how it can happen because we have learned that uh, the charge can flow from only high potential to a low potential even, right? And in this, how it is happening that the charge of two coulomb is transferring to the a spherical shell which has a ten coulomb of charge. So let us understand this and let us just prove this, correct? Okay. So let us prove this phenomenon. To prove this, let us consider a sphere, right? This is a spherical shell. This is a spherical shell. Consider this, this is a spherical shell, right? And uh, let's say its radius is capital R, capital R, 
and consider another sphere which is inside this spherical shell is like this and its uh, uh, radius is let's say small r fine and the charge on this spherical shell is plus q and charge on this small sphere is let's say it is q now tell me what is the total potential on the outer spherical shell on this shell what will be its total potential let's say the potential is v r it will be equal to what it will be equal to first potential due to its own charge right plus potential due to the charge q on the inner sphere right due to this sphere the potential will also be there on this sphere right i mean uh, this small sphere will also contribute to the potential on this spherical shell so it will have another term which is inner sphere right now what is the potential due to its own charge right if this sphere has charge q means if this sphere has charge q then what will be the potential due to this its own charge on its surface it will be nothing but what will be 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q upon r right now what will be the potential due to this uh, charge q on this surface it will be nothing but 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught small q upon capital r right fine so it will be 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q upon r plus q upon r okay so let us just name it equation 1 fine now we will find potential on this small sphere of radius r fine now what will be the total potential on this small sphere with charge q let us say it is v small r it will be what it will be first potential due to its own charge right and plus potential due to charge q on outer sphere right so what is the value of the potential due to its own charge it will be nothing but 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q upon small r and what will be the value of potential due to the charge q on outer sphere it will be 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q upon r why because we know that in case of spherical shell the potential is same in is constant inside the shell so let us say this is equation 2 right now we have two equations first our first equation was was our first equation now we will find the difference between vr and vr that is what is vr and vr let us see what this difference will give us so when we subtract it then what will happen q upon r so we can write it as not 1 upon r not 1 upon r v now here since r is smaller than r therefore 1 upon r will be greater than 1 upon r it means that this quantity on right hand side is positive quantity right this is positive therefore vr minus vr is positive it means that vr i mean potential on charge sphere is greater than potential on this spherical shell right therefore therefore what will happen the if we connect if we somehow connect this sphere with the conducting wire to the spherical shell then the potential on the sphere will get transferred from the sphere to shell right because we have just took that potential at this sphere which is vr 
is greater than the potential at the surface which was Vr. We are just prove it here. You see it here. What does it tell you? It tells you that Vr is equal to some condition constant plus Vr. So Vr is clearly greater than Vr by some constant value. Therefore, therefore what will happen? The potential will transfer from this surface to this surface. Right? So these are two principles that we will use in the working of Vandiza generator. Right? And we will learn about its working and construction in the next lectures. Okay? So thanks for watching and have a nice day.